Hello, I am Jessica Webb at the Center for Research and Education on Violence Against Women and Children at Western University. On behalf of the Knowledge Hub team, welcome to Knowledge Hub Presents. The Knowledge Hub Presents series features information on trauma and violence informed research and practice developed by members of the trauma informed community of practice in their work related to preventing and addressing family violence. We acknowledge that Western University is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, the Lenapewak, and the Attawandran peoples, on lands connected to the London Township and Sombra Treaties of 1796, and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. With this, we respect the long-standing relationships that Indigenous nations have to this land, as they are the original caretakers. We acknowledge the historical and ongoing injustices that Indigenous peoples, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people endure in Canada. We accept responsibility as a public institution to contribute towards revealing and correcting miseducation, as well as renewing respectful relationships with Indigenous communities through our teaching, research, and community service. Given that the Knowledge Hub is grounded in trauma and violence-informed health promotion, we also acknowledge the intergenerational trauma and resiliency that has resulted from the colonial agenda and the genocidal practices of residential schools, day schools, Indian hospitals, and both the 60s and millennium scoop. We commit to centering these experiences as we continue to do our work. We are happy to be joined today by Dr. Francine Derrick and Gabby Gonzalez Montaner. Dr. Francine Derrick is an assistant professor in the Department of Health Sciences at Carleton University. She is an interdisciplinary researcher with expertise in qualitative health research, public health, inequities in pregnancy and physical activity, maternal health, and the intersections of racism, gender-based violence, substance use, trauma, and structural violence. As founder of the Health and the Wellness Equity Research Group at Carleton, Dr. Derek leads feminist participatory action research that focuses on leveraging physical activity to improve the quality of life of self-identified women and their families. Her current work aims to address inequalities in physical activity for pregnant and parenting individuals and families through trauma and violence informed approaches to physical activity. While Dr. Derek's research is predominantly focused on self identity, oh, uh, her work also continues um, to advocate for gender sensitive programming for fathers in marginalizing circumstances. Dr. Derek's main overarching goal is to co-create programs and resources to increase access to physical activity, enhance social cohesion, community connections, and improve all overall health by way of addressing individual, systemic, and structural barriers to health and well-being. Gabby Gonzalez Montaner is a research manager at the Health and Equity Health and Wellness Equity Research Group at Carleton University. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Health Studies and a Master's of Public Health. Motivated by her previous work with community-based trauma-informed housing, mental health, and physical activity programs, as well as her own passion and need for physical activity and movement, her interests are in improving access to and the ability of trauma-informed physical activity programming for self-identified women. Currently, she is supporting the research group's Public Health Agency of Canada's funded project, Leveraging Trauma and Violence, informed physical activity to support individuals who have experienced family violence, a community-based participatory approach, which they will be presenting on today. And so with that, I turn it over to both of you. Thank you very much, Jessica, for the nice introduction. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here today. The Knowledge Hub has been such a great resource for the work that we do, um, and we're very excited to be presenting to all of you. Uh, so first of all, um, I know there was a land acknowledgement, but I would just also like to acknowledge that the land on which Carleton University, um, where I am currently presenting from today, is located on the unceded, unsurrendered traditional territories of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. And I am really grateful to be a guest on this land where I live, work, play, and co-facilitate programs and engage in physical activity. So... For today, uh, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the larger research project we're working on, just to provide some context. Um, and then we'll dive into today, to today's focus, which is really introducing the trauma and violence informed physical activity training tool that our team has developed. 
So as Jessica mentioned, we are grateful for the funding um, from the Public Health Agency of Canada. And this, uh, our project is really designed to support self-identified women and children who experience family violence through community-developed trauma and violence-informed physical activity programs. Um, and we're midway through this grant, and we've made a great deal of progress, including the implementation of community-based interventions with over 130 women and 150 children across four sites in Ottawa, Vancouver, and Toronto. However, today we are going to focus on the development of the training modules that we designed as part of this work. <clears throat> so I, we may have, there we go. <laughs> According to the Canadian Psychological Association um, and the US National Council for Behavioral Health, it's estimated that 70% of Canadians and Americans report experiences of at least one traumatic event in their lifetime. Um, similar statistics are seen globally with the World Health Organization's World Mental Health Survey that also reported 70% of participants re um, reporting one traumatic event and over 30% um, reporting exposures to four or more traumatic events. And um, so as many of us on this call know, exposure to trauma can lead to development of post-traumatic stress disorder, um, some major depressive disorders, anxiety, and substance use. So you may be wondering why physical activity? So there is a great deal of research and evidence that shows engagement in physical activity leads to numerous benefits for individuals who've experienced trauma by improving overall mental health in addition to decreasing symptoms related to PTSD, uh, depression, anxiety, sleep disturbances, and other sort of closely related health conditions. So most recently, um, there was an article in the British Medical Journal, and it was a systematic review and network meta-analysis. Um, and the purpose of this study was to examine exercise for treating major depressive disorders compared with psychotherapy, antidepressants, um, and control conditions. So what was interesting is that the authors found that exercise is an effective treatment for depression. And as you can see, um, you know, on this table here, there is um, with dance rated the highest, which is kind of interesting and aligns with a lot of the work we're doing. Um, walking and jogging and yoga and strength training um, were all very effective um, strategies that could be used as adjunctive treatments to support um, individuals with, um, with depression. So in line with that, um, you know, we, we've sort of amassed this evidence. There's, there's a lot of um, great research out there to show um, that in supporting people in being active is an effective adjunctive support for positive mental health. Um, but a key component in advocating for physical activity um, as a tool for recovery is really promoting equitable access. So in other words, um, you know, it's more than saying, let's just get outside for a walk, a jog, or, or practice some yoga. It's about really recognizing and acknowledging the systemic and structural barriers that specific groups and individuals face um, in access to participating in physical activity. So when we talk about trauma and violence informed physical activity, what we really mean is a, a practice that emphasizes the value of centering issues of equity, inclusion, safety, and access into program design, delivery, and evaluation. So by adop adopting um, a TVIPA approach, we can create inclusive opportunities so that individuals who may live in or experience mar marginalizing circumstances um, are able to access the mental and physical health benefits of physical activity. So the first iteration of our training um, was began back in 2018. And at that time, it was delivered in person with community members and community partners who were um, involved in developing this work. So drawing on work that was being done in trauma and violence informed care settings, like the the great opportunity to work with Dr. Colleen Barco from UBC, um, who was doing this work in hospital and clinical settings. 
Um, we basically borrowed the principles and concepts and we tailored them to more of a health promotion, physical activity context. So we really wanted a starting point to map out what trauma and violence informed physical activity could look like. So fast forward to today, we've expanded our training um, and transitioned the material to an online space in order to reach a wider audience um, and to support other people who may be interested in um, scaling up trauma-informed programming. So over the past year and a half, we've collaborated with community members, physical activity instructors, community partners, and researchers to develop this online training um, to provide an introduction to understanding, designing, and implementing trauma and violence informed physical activity. So we'll start with a little bit of an explanation of um, how we developed it and sort of explain why we think this tool may be a little bit different um, than other tools that have been developed. So <clears throat> as I noted, the first iteration of this in-person training um, was, was in person. This training was in person. And given that we were scaling it up to um, new and diverse communities, we wanted to take a more comprehensive approach to developing the training. So simultaneously, we were doing a number of things. So first, we conducted focus groups with 83 individuals in Ottawa, Toronto, and Vancouver. Um, and these would be people who would potentially take part in the programming that we were offering across our partner sites. Um, we then completed interviews with 34 practitioners from various social service organizations. Um, and essentially, we asked questions such as like, why do you think, what are the important skills and knowledge that people need to have in order to work in your community? So as I mentioned, simultaneously, we were doing literature reviews. We, we really um, wanted to understand how we could create an online tool that was um, trauma-informed itself um, to relay the importance of trauma and violence-informed physical activity. Um, we worked uh, with a number of community partners, content and pedagogy experts um, to determine the best strategies in moving forward with an online tool. Um, so in the training module, you'll hear from, you know, a number of community partners, research and experts in a diversity of fields related to trauma. Um, so related, so we look at the brain, we look at gender-based violence, and we look at people with expertise in, in physical activity. Um, we then reviewed and revised content, um, which felt and like it was an endless process to sort of end up um, at a stage where we could pilot and evaluate um, the programming. So just to be clear, um, we want to be clear about who this was designed for. So we initially set out to create training modules to support our work that was funded through um, this FAC grant. Um, and it was really for intervention purposes. Uh, so all of the instructors, service providers, and research team members taking part in our um, work were expected to complete the training to ensure that we had a shared understanding of TVIPA. So while the modules were really purpose-built for our work scaling up um, trauma-informed programming, uh, we decided that they may be useful for folks who are interested in implementing this approach or practice in different types of organizations. So I think there are a couple things that make this training unique. We are certainly not the first people to, to develop online training, um, but according to our searches, we are the first folks um, who have done it for free. Um, so we looked at other programs that were being taught online, in person, or some sort of hybrid approach. Um, and these were clustered in Canada, the US, New Zealand, and Australia. And the vast majority were centered exclusively around yoga. Um, and all charged fees, um, again, most offered, offered scholarships, um, but there, so our goal was really to create free training that captured a more diverse range of physical activity types. Um, that would aim more movement facilitators in providing trauma and violence informed approaches. So the modules we developed do take approximately, you know, four to four and a half hours. Um, and before I pass the show over to Gabby, I just want to note how exciting and slightly terrifying it is to, to share these resources with all of you. So this is our interpretation of what trauma and violence informed physical activity can look like. 
And we've recognized that there are many, many, many iterations of trauma-informed approaches and trainings, and they really vary in length, quality, and cost. Um, but we want, as I mentioned, we wanted to create a training that was free and a starting point to really understand what trauma and violence-informed physical activity programming can look like. Uh, so we're really great to all of the grateful to all of the folks out there doing. Um, work to improve physical activity access um, for all. So Gabby, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Thank you, Francine. Um, all right, so now that you have a general idea of how the modules were developed, I will walk you through uh, what they actually cover and a little bit about you know, what they look like and what you might experience if you choose to explore them. So the training tool is made up of 39 lessons organized into six modules. Um, as you can see here, the modules begin with um, uh, section one, the warm up, where we introduce the platform and the modules, just do a few um, little admin pieces at the top there. And then we move into the starting line, which provides an overview of gender based violence, gender based violence and sport, and then introduces trauma and violence informed physical activity. Uh, the next module is the starting line, which provides an overview of, oh, sorry, the next um, module is raising the bar, which does a deep dive into trauma and highlights some of the impacts trauma has on the brain and human behavior. The fourth module is called the game plan and explores uh, trauma and violence informed physical activity service provision. And in this module, there are a number of case studies that are used to highlight different challenges and barriers that can be encountered both when accessing physical activity, but also when designing and implementing physical activity programming. And the next one is TVIPA in Motion. And this module features uh, videos of a few different service providers who uh, talk about uh, their own successes and challenges that they've experienced implementing uh, trauma and violence informed physical activity in their own communities. And then finally, the cool down, which wraps things up with an FAQ section, a discussion board for participants, and then suggested uh, resources for continued learning as well. So taking a closer look at the modules, each one begins with some brief uh, text. Oh. Um, sorry, just having a few troubles with the slides here. Give me one moment. There we are. Uh, so the next several slides are a combination of screenshots and uh, screen recordings of the module. So I'll just warn you that there might be a little bit of movement on the screen. Uh, so feel free to look away or minimize your screen if you prefer. So the the course is first accessed um, through a link that invites you to register using your email address. Uh, using this feature makes it so that participants can log off and step away from the modules at any time uh, for any duration of time without losing their progress, which we found to be a very important feature, though it does create a barrier um, in that you need to have a email address and disclose that information. So a little two-sided there. Um, once a participant does self-register and enters the course, they are invited to begin learning. So you are brought to this screen. Um, and so as uh, yeah, so you're brought to a course preview, which provides a snapshot of all of the modules um, and their different lessons. So this is much of what I just talked about previously. You have the warm up and all of the little bits and pieces below there, and then the starting line and so on. Um, and so while we have been very intentional with how we've uh, ordered things and what we've included, uh, participants are absolutely welcome to choose uh, the order in which they work through the material and engage with, um, engage with it all. So it's really up to um, the participant how they want to uh, focus their time and, and what, uh, or what lessons they want to focus on as well. So taking a closer look at the modules, um, each one begins with uh, some brief text supplemented with images, animations, activities, and videos uh, from a wide range of speakers, including practitioners, organization leaders, and researchers. 
Each lesson and module are relatively consistent using similar formatting and visual cues. So for example, there are uh, information boxes like you can see here in green at the bottom um, throughout that signal uh, that there's either an important definition or term or concept that we'd like to call attention to. And so we've tried to be really consistent with how we formatted that throughout so that as you move through, things uh, feel a little bit more fluid and um, familiar as you go. At the beginning of each module, participants will also find introductions to the individuals who collaborated with us for that specific topic er area. So here we have Manak Luol and Nicole Marcia who contributed to the module TVIPA in Motion, where they provide details of their work and experiences uh, providing accessible physical activity programming in their own communities. So along with videos and animations, we've uh, included different types of activities throughout the modules. So here's one example uh, where you're invited to match a previously introduced concept to a definition or example. Um, here you can see the tenets of trauma and violence informed approaches on the left hand side and practice based examples on the right hand side to match with that tenant. So we really just try to provide lots of opportunities for people to kind of play with the new information that they've been presented with to, to really work towards solidifying some of that knowledge. Here is another example um, that highlights the impacts of trauma on the brain. Um, so in this lesson, these concepts that, um, that are shown in these bubbles that will show up any moment, um, are discussed in great detail in a video um, and then again in text and then finally providing this visual kind of um, to further support that, that learning um, to really solidify uh, those concepts. And while this isn't the most um, accurate representation of the human brain, um, it is colorful and fun. So we hope that it still does the job we're, we're looking for it to do. So another example shown here is a message board that allows learners to share their ideas while also giving them an opportunity to consider the ideas of others who are participating in the modules. So these message boards are included throughout the modules in various contexts for the case studies, for um, FAQ boards, discussions, um, discussion questions. Um, and as you can see here, uh, messages are completely anonymous and have no email or username associated with them. So um, there is some anonymity there and we are able to also uh, kind of monitor them for uh, safety and, and other things. And as each module winds to an end, we offer an invitation uh, to take a break and move your body in some way. So in one section, we have Nicole Marcia, who leads a seated yoga practice for the participants um, if they choose to. And in other sections, there are images um, inviting you to stretch, breathe, and take a break as well. So this is just an image of Nicole Marcia leading the seated chair practice, yoga practice, and some images that we've included um, to invite participants to stretch and move their bodies in comfortable and accessible ways. Finally, as each module ends, um, uh, we uh, provide a bit of a deep dive section where additional links are provided to websites, publications, and other relevant resources. And we've really tried to highlight uh, resources that have helped us to develop our own understandings of uh, trauma and violence informed physical activity and things that we find particularly um, useful and important. So as Francine uh, mentioned earlier, when we set out to develop these modules, we knew that it was important to not only provide information to support the uptake of trauma and violence informed approaches um, in physical activity, but to do so in a way that also uh, modeled trauma and violence informed approaches as well. 
And so as we were thinking about this, we kind of carved out uh, three key areas of consideration that we wanted to focus on uh, when developing the modules, which were features, format, and messaging. So for features, we really wanted to pay attention to um, how the modules were built in an online space and what elements we could control to reduce barriers to access, but also to build a sense of safety throughout. So most videos that are included um, are intentionally kept short at two to five minutes long and have playback speed control and subtitles. I will mention that many of the videos that are incorporated are ones that we didn't produce ourselves. So there is a bit of variability there in, in, in those elements. Um, it was also important that this training be available for free, be self-paced and emphasize learning and exploring versus dichotomous scoring. So there are no quizzes and completion does not hinge on uh, correct answers or, or anything like that, but rather there are opportunities to exchange ideas using those message boards we saw earlier, um, to try different approaches and engage in the material in various uh, ways to, to ensure that people are getting to experiment with some of the new concepts being presented. Um, in thinking about the format of the training, the lessons are designed to be short and segmented with simple and easy to use um, and consistent layouts. Um, we also incorporated flexibility as much as we could by ensuring breaks are offered and consistent uh, offered consistently um, and that participants are able to leave the training for as long as they like without losing their progress. Um, acknowledging that a lot of the people that we are really hoping that this training reaches are super busy um, already and, and will likely not be able to complete something like this in, in one afternoon or anything close to that. So it was really important that we made it flexible, but also such that you didn't have to um, monitor your own progress or save your own spot in your head. So. And then finally, we were really intentional about using invitational and inclusive language, providing clear learning expectations and predictable course content and structure. We also tried to incorporate diverse images where we could um, and definitions for technical terms and closed captioning for all uh, original videos uh, that we uh, included in the training. And like with anything, there are limitations to this training. And we want to acknowledge that this is really just a starting point for us. Um, there are some features that were available to us and lots of things that we learned along the way um, that, we, that, we, um, that we weren't able to maybe incorporate uh, this time around. Um, but we believe this will be an iterative process and are really looking forward to um, you know, sharing it with with the people and, and learning about how we can kind of uh, continue to improve and, and optimize the training. Which brings us to our evaluation. Um, so building off of the work of Dr. Uh, Nadine Wadhan at Western University, we are implementing an evaluation of this training tool. So the evaluation has three components, a pre-engagement questionnaire, a post-engagement questionnaire, and, oh, and a follow-up interview. Um, the questionnaires are embedded in the training tool and are designed to assess two primary outcomes. The first is the impact the training has on the learner's confidence in their knowledge of trauma and violence informed physical activity. And there's the second is their ability to apply a trauma and violence informed uh, approach to physical activity. And then the interview component is meant to be conducted about three or so mo months um, after the completion of the modules and is designed to learn about any lasting impacts, if any, uh, that the modules had on, the, um, on their practice. So our evaluation is still very much in progress and we do not yet have any data to share about what we're learning or seeing through that, but we are excited to report that we've had um, 188 participants register in the training and of, that, of those folks, um, 157 who have chosen to take part in the pre-engagement questionnaire. Um, so it's all very promising and we're really excited at the uptake and, and hope that um, it's able to reach more, more people. So just to begin wrapping up, we do want to emphasize that there is no one way to deliver trauma and violence informed physical activity. 
Um, as you likely all know, context is so important um, in this work and will ultimately determine how um, trauma and violence informed physical activity is delivered. And we believe that in order to uh, effectively deliver trauma and violence informed physical activity programming, there needs to be an understanding of the social, physical, and mental impacts of trauma. And finally, we would like uh, to point you towards the modules to check them out if you like. Um, so if you are interested in participating, oops, uh, there we are. If you are interested in participating um, in the training, uh, you can use this QR code or the link um, in the blue text there um, to access um, access them. And again, you'll just need to create a, a little account and that will um, allow you to self-register for, for the training. So like I mentioned, we are still in the evaluation phase. So if you do cho choose to check out the modules, um, you will be able to uh, participate in the pre and post evaluation questionnaires. And both of those are embedded in the module. So you'll see them as you flip through the content. It's totally optional. You don't have to if you don't if you don't want to, and you can just explore the modules uh, without doing the evaluation if you choose. And that's all for us. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, thanks so much uh, to both of you. That was so fabulous. Um, so we have a little bit of time now for a few questions. If um, if folks who are able to hang around want to um, throw any questions you have in the Q and A, um, Sabri, do you want to start us off? Sabri's going to uh, co facilitate this with me. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you again, Francine and Gabby, for uh, this uh, informative uh, um, uh, presentation. Uh, we have one question um, from uh, the audience. Uh, have you come across research or are you familiar with trauma-specific uh, considerations for contact sports? I'm not familiar with that myself. Um, really interesting question, though, and and I'll have to do a little bit of searching after this call and, and learn a little bit about it myself. Yeah, I think that's a great question um, and, and certainly an area for more research, which is sort of what, you know, we've been calling for. There's so much around yoga, which is really important. But as we know, yoga isn't appealing to everybody. Um, I will say in, in the work that we have done in the past, we have struggle a lot of a lot of the women that we have worked with have experiences of violence so people you know have naturally intent you know wanted to learn self-defense or wanted to to know what that could look like and that was a really challenging session for us to run um so i i think it's an area where we definitely need more more research and more information and and hopefully, you know, in a year or two, we can update these training modules to include a, you know, specific uh, section on how to support folks who are engaged in contact sport to be trauma informed. But thank you for that question. Thank you, thank you. Et uh, je répète pour notre audience uh, francophone, si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas. Les... For the French uh, audience, if you have any uh, questions, please write them in the Q and A. Okay. <clears throat> um, next question. What are the potential benefits of integrating trauma and violence informed principles into existing physical activity initiatives? And how can organizations ensure sustainability and scalability? Yeah, another, another <laughs> great question. Um, I think, you know, oftentimes when we talk about taking a trauma and violence informed approach, people will say, oh, you have to do that with specific organizations or specific people who have experienced violence. And, you know, as we talked about the, the stats at the start of um, the start of this presentation, you know, we have over 70 percent of people who experienced a traumatic event. So I think we can assume that any room we're walking into any physical activity class you're attending is going to have people who you know have experienced some level of trauma in their life so i think there there's no there's no disadvantage to taking this approach right i think i think it's really only beneficial 
Um, and I think that, you know, in order for organ, there needs to be a commitment sort of on all levels when we're trying to implement something like this. You could have, you know, a trauma informed instructor, but if somebody has to walk through, you know, and they're they're meeting somebody at reception who, you know, isn't particularly inviting, or you know, so I, so I think it's a there's a there's a big level of commitment. Um, Jess, can you repeat the question? I think I got off track there. <laughs> uh, so um, no, I don't think I think you're on track. So the potential benefits of integrating uh, mm -hmm. TVI principles into existing physical activity initiatives, and then how can we uh, ensure or even just imagine sustainability or scalability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the benefit is that you're going to make your programming more inclusive, and it's going to be more available to a wider audience. Um, and potentially, those folks who may benefit most from physical activity, right? So people that aren't currently engaged in programming, um, you know, if if we're creating these spaces that they feel welcome in and are coming back to, we're going to see huge benefits, both for, you know, hopefully for them individually, but as, as you know, a community in terms of mental and physical well-being. Definitely. Uh, okay, I think that's all we have time for um, today. And that's a great place to, um, to, to leave us. So thank you both so much. And the the comments, the chat has been super active and really positive. So thanks to everybody who came and um, we're so glad you got a lot out of it and, and check out their, um, check out their training online. So thank you both so much. And thanks to our uh, interpreters. And we will see you all next time. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Take care. Bye.